So this is the QAV400 build. I'm referencing the build manual from QAV400.com and just doing a video version of this. So let's go ahead and get started. As you see, I have my four arms laid out and the groove side is actually facing down. So there's a groove where you can put your ESC leads. And then you'll notice the PCB within the frame. We're going to put that facing down. And for each of the arms, we're going to use four of these screws uh, to attach each arm. We'll use a little bit of Loctite for each one. And we'll be using the hex key provided with the kit. So I'll just put a little dab of Loctite in each hole. And we'll do that for each of the four arms. So that's our PDB plate with the arms attached. And now we're going to look at placing our ESCs. Okay, for our ESCs, you can see there are four solder pads for your positive and negative terminals. Now, it's a little bit tricky because to get four of these guys in here, see it'll be pretty tight. So what I'm going to do is shorten these leads and then solder them. If you look at the uh, build log you can trim them and I think I'll connect to the plus on the ESC4 and then on the opposite end connect to the minus. So they'll kind of be staggered on each side and that just keeps it a little bit cleaner so you don't have to bring your negative lead over this way. It's a little nerve-wracking cutting your ESC lead so short. Our ESCs are now soldered in place. If you take a close look, you can see what I was referring to related to staggering these guys now. You can see how short I cut those leads, and it made me a little nervous, but uh, if you do your power here and your negative over here, and vice versa on the other side, it makes it easier versus trying to cram these two leads and these two leads together. So in my build intro video, I had kind of complained these ESC leads didn't come with any female bullet connectors. And if you notice how long, probably about a foot and a half long uh, leads. After reading through the QAV build instructions, it mentioned that uh, the bullet connectors that you use a lot of times are a, a point of failure. You know, the connectors can come undone, short out. So what I'm going to do, and it's the first time I've done this, is I'm going to trim these cables and I'm going to solder the motor leads directly to the ESCs. And I'll try to preserve the uh, shrink tubing as much as I can and I'll just cut a little bit on each side, desolder the leads, and then I'll be able to solder my motor leads on here. And what this will do, will it'll allow me to get the ideal link so there's not a whole lot of slack. And the one other fairly difficult thing is going to be making sure that I have uh, the proper leads connected so that I have the correct motor rotation for each arm on the frame. Now as you know if you have bullet connectors that's easy to do because you just pull out your connector and switch two of the three leads but in this case I'll actually have to make sure that I have the proper rotation before everything is soldered into place. Okay, so I've got the ESCs soldered in, and so I needed to make sure my motor spin directions, and you can see that I have them marked on the sides. I needed to make sure that those were proper. And one other tip when you're desoldering those leads, I have this uh, cheapo soldering iron, 25 watt, just for quick projects. Well, this actually didn't have enough heat to desolder the leads that come on these ESC and maybe they use a different higher rated solder but using that 25 watt iron I was unable to uh, get the leads off. And that's where my Weller heavy duty gun iron came in handy. It uh, has two heating modes, 140 watts if you're barely pushed in and then 100 watts if you're all the way in and that was able to uh, melt that solder very quickly. Okay, in this step we're going to attach the other bottom plate. You know, if you notice, I have these spacers, nine of them, that we're going to attach to this bottom plate and attach that to the other side of the spacers. And what I'll do is I'll use this little hex bolt 
push it up through and then screw the spacer onto it. For each one I'm just going to put a little drip of the blue Loctite. Our nine aluminum spacers are in place and what we'll do now is we'll attach the bottom part of this frame. Four screws per arm and then screw for each spacer and we'll make sure that our wires are threaded through this channel properly so that we don't pinch anything when we put this plate on. Okay so the bottom section of our quad is complete now there are about 25 screws just on this plate with Loctite so it's one of those deals where when you're working with your ESC's and your pigtail connector and all that you want to make sure that you got everything in place it's going to be a huge pain to undo this and reconfigure any of your electronics so make sure you get that right uh, before you put your plates together and add Loctite and one other thing I did before I mounted the plates was I ran the ESC's up through the bottom just so they'd have access to a plug into the flight controller okay now we're going to put our bobbins in place the build comes with six of them which means you get two extra which is always handy to have and we're going to put two on the back and then two on the front so what we'll do is we'll use these nuts to secure them put one here one here and then we'll put a little bit of Loctite on there and then put our nuts on And we have our bobbins attached and secured with Loctite. Now be careful when you twist these into place. You don't want to twist too hard or you could uh, rip that. And they're the ones in the rear. Okay, now we're going to be working with this longest section of the frame. And the GoPro is going to be up front. Make sure that these slots are on the left side. And you see the two aluminum spacers, the long ones that we have here, 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 and here. We can use these screws to attach each one of these spacers with Loctite. Okay, our long spacers are mounted on the plate. Now once again, you want to make sure that this, as you're looking, is on the left side because you could accidentally mount them on the other, then you're set up backwards. So now we'll just go ahead and put this plate into place. You'll notice these empty holes in these right here, and that's designed just for your bobbins to slip through. Let me point out a couple of things real quick for the long section of this frame. Now, here's a center hole and these holes right here that you can use to wire or thread your ESCs up through. Now keep in mind these rear slots, you're not going to want to use those. That's where your LiPo will sit. So make sure that you put your ESCs either the middle or the front. And we're going to mount our flight controller kind of in this area. If you notice where these two posts are, this is the center of gravity for the frame. So CG is here, you have your LiPo in the back, GoPro will be up front, and you'll have the ability to move your LiPo f forward and back to get the CG just right. Now in this video I'm not going to be mounting the uh, flight controller. I'll do a follow-up video that shows the QAV400 with the NASA, and then also I want to do a test with my APM 2.5 which will kind of sit like that. Finally I'll do another test with the multi Wii board. And another cool thing is if you notice these what appear to be random hole placements they line up with the APM as well as the multi Wii. So you have a different hole pattern that you can use to mount either of your boards. And I bet it also works with seen a lot of guys with CC3D flight controller so I bet that whole pattern would support that as well. Now we're going to mount our top plate in place. There are the two orange bobbins on the front and then the two on the back. Now you can see our long plate for the clean section is mounted, secured. So next we'll go ahead and mount the final plate, it's the very top plate, and then our frame build will be done. And this is the front. We want this cutout to point towards the front of the frame. It actually doesn't even fit if you do it backwards. So we'll be 
mounting it this way, a little bit of thread lock in each one of these spacers, and then eight screws. And And that's the QAV 400 build. Great looking little frame. You can see plenty of space between the two plates of the clean section, which will allow us to mount our flight controller and electronics in here, possibly without even having to take this plate off. So that was a pretty easy and fun little build. Only thing that caught me off guard was soldering these motor leads directly to our ESCs. And in the next few videos, I'm gonna work with the NASA on the QAV400, then the APM 2.5, and then the multi wii And just kind of get an out of the box feel for each of these flight controllers with this frame and just see how each one of them performs. And if you have any questions about this build, please feel free to post them below. And thanks for watching.